Hey there, church family. My name is Sydney, and I'm a second year student with the School of Ministry, and I get to hang out with the students of the Front Range, which is pretty awesome, because they're pretty awesome, and I love it. Um, Today we were in Isaiah 17 through 20, but I want to look at Isaiah 17. It's a prophecy about the destruction of Damascus. Okay, so there's sin, there's judgment, and I want to read in verse 7. Okay, Isaiah prophesies, saying, In that day, people will look to their maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. And then in verse 10, he says, You have forgotten God, your Savior. You have not remembered the rock, your fortress. Okay, so there's coming judgment. There's coming destruction. Why? It's because the people have turned from God. And in their pride, they're worshiping the things that they're creating, the things that they're making, instead of the creator, the maker. See, I want to ask us, how quick are we to when God's conviction falls on us to repent? Or how quick are we to defend that which we're worshiping? How quick are we to defend the idol or how quick are we to come to the Lord and say, God, forgive me? See, so often I think we can say, oh, it's not that big of a, it's not that big of a deal. God, I'm not actually worshiping that thing. I promise. Like I I could never, it's so small in comparison to you, but sometimes our hearts are meditating, are focusing, are worshiping that thing more than God. And so when God reveals a conviction, When God's conviction falls and he reveals that there is a sin, there is an idol at work, let's be a people who say, God, I'm so sorry. God, thank you for revealing my heart. Forgive me, God. I want to love you most and I worship you most, God. Let's be a people who do that. See, there's coming judgment. We saw, he says there's destruction coming, but he also says that in that day, people will look to their maker. People will turn from their sin. They will repent. See, when the conviction falls, let's turn. Let's repent. Let's come back to the Lord. And I also love what it says. In that day, people will look to their what? It could have said that they'll look to their God. It could have said they'll look to their Savior. It could have said they'll look to the Holy One. But it says, in that day, they will look to their Maker. See, the people went from worshiping what their hands made to worshiping the maker. See, here's the thing. Nothing we make will ever be good. Nothing we make will ever be greater than him because he alone is good and he alone is maker, the maker of heaven and earth, the maker of everything good. See, so often we can fall into the temptation and be distracted by worshiping what's crafted from sin instead of worshiping the one who creates in perfectness. This actually kind of recently happened. I was reading a book, and it depicted this beautiful love story. I was like, wow, that was so gorgeous. It was so sacrificial. Like, I want to love that way. And instantly, I felt the Lord in his kindness reveal his Holy Spirit. was like, hey, Sydney, um, are you in this much awe and wonder at my word? Are you in this much awe and wonder at my love? And it was this deep realization that even though it felt so innocent, even though it felt so okay, I was worshiping this love that was crafted by this human instead of worshiping he who is love. Instead of being in awe at his word. I was saying, God, I want to be like this story more than I said, God, I want to be like you, Jesus. It was seemed so innocent and it was so easy to fall into. So I want to encourage us to not fall into the temptation to be distracted by all these idols that are pulling for our heart's attention, but to say, no, I'm going to worship my maker. I'm going to worship the maker because nothing that's made, nothing that's crafted here is any good. It's him and him alone. And so I want to encourage you today to spend time, ask God to reveal the idols in your life, ask him to reveal the things that you've made, the things that you've crafted that are causing your heart's um, attention to be set on and to say, God, draw my heart to you. Draw the eyes of my heart to you, Christ.